Hey, how's it going, guys? It's Shutdoor with Door Shutter coming back to you with episode 42 of Direwolf 20's 1.16 pack. And we are kind of wrapped up on the auto crafting uh, stuff. I did set up the steel one. Uh, we have steel grit and enriched iron set up now, so all of that's just separate. This is still just cruising. Um, I haven't actually looked at that in a solid second, so let's go hop over there and see how that's actually doing. Um, I've just kind of been working on other things, so I don't really, I haven't been paying too much attention to this one. Um, looks like, yeah, we have 13,000 blocks, so we're, we're going to be good for a little bit here. Um, so we're going to start on a new mod today. Um, we are going to be starting on blood magic. So I built this little room. Um, and the reason I'm not putting this in any of these chunks that I've already claimed is is because blood magic has tons of multi-blocks. Um, things called altars and these tiers of altars, uh, if that's still the same. So, <laughs> I haven't looked into this mod since like 1.7, so things might have changed. Um, so, first off, let's get this thing, which is the book for blood magic. Okay. So as you can see here, it's kind of just like Batania's or like any other mods kind of thing here. Um, but we first need a blood altar. The blood altar is the central block of the mod, as it says here. It's the main component of the mod. Um, okay. And then we'll also need a sacrificial knife, which is how we get mo or, uh, this is how we get life essence. Um, and this is how we craft blank runes. We'll get into this later. But first off, let's get a blood altar. I bl er, let's just get an altar. Altar. Okay. Um, quickly, let's look that up right here. Okay. So the reason I made this really oddly shaped, because this is not four chunks. It's actually uh, several more chunks than usual. Because I need a center point. I can't really do this without having a central point. So here's our first central point of the thing. So we're going to set this down. This doesn't matter where you set it really. As long as you have enough space to put tiers around it. Okay. So let's get a knife. Okay. So I'm going to need my food real quick. Let's eat up. So if we just prick our finger. Oop, not that. And we just prick our finger, so you right click in the air. And you can start seeing that we are getting blood inside of... Why are... Is this a chisel or chisel and bits thing? I was messing with chisel and bits earlier and I couldn't figure it out too well. But as you can see, we have blood in here. We can't see how much blood's in this because we don't have the correct thing yet. But uh, we can see that we do need to heal up. Um... So what I'm actually kind of thinking is we could do like a beacon or something. Uh, or a Batania's uh, regeneration pendant. Probably wouldn't be the worst idea, but we'll, we'll look into that in a minute here. So if we can look here, uh, the soul network, we need to get to a tier one weak blood orb. Um, so basically what the soul network is, is it's kind of like your life points but you can use these life points to do rituals and other things that are required in the mod. Um, there is just quite a bit of information if you want to, you know, learn more about it. Each each one of these orbs has a different tier and a capacity, um, and each one requires a different tier of altar. You got tier four, tier three, tier two, and tier one. You can see that we need a two thousand. Um, life points which is which is in this but a blood orb will create a one for the player instead of a singular block because right now i can't really use this as my own uh life point network okay so let's see here so um i believe a divination sigil is what you need to actually read the um the life points in here, but you can see that we don't have the stuff for that right now. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what you use to read your own network and the network and a block and different things inside the mod. So it's kind of like the, uh, reading tool of this one. So 
<clears throat> All right, so let's scroll through here. So yeah, you can see we need blank runes. For the first tier, you need eight of these blank runes. And these blank runes will be used later on to get more tiers. As you can see here, this is tier two. Um, the Dagger of Sacrifice allows you to um, kill mobs to put life essence in the thing. Um, and this is tier three, tier four, tier five. And I don't know if tier six is even existing. So yeah, tier five is not even in here yet. So we'll just be going to tier four for now, I believe. And if tier five is in here, we can mess with that. But right now it's not that important. It looks like we're kind of full on this. So what we can start doing here is let's just grab a diamond. If I can type. Not a pristine diamond. Let's just get a diamond. Okay. And that should start working. Yeah, you can see it's draining the blood out of the pool. As you can see how it's full it is. And you can see it's slowly, slowly going down. I don't have particles on, so it's, it's going to be a little bit harder to tell. But whenever you get this orb... You just right click and it'll bind it to your player. So it says current owner shut door. This means now we have our own personal network, which is pretty cool. This is actually also a crafting component and some of the recipes as well as you saw earlier um, with the like blank runes and things like that. So um, yeah, <clears throat> I don't know why I have all of this stuff over here. All right, so let's see here. Um, so that's that. Let's look at tiers and slates. So tiers and slates are something we're going to be needing as well. The reason we need this stuff is because these are required to craft runes and just different things inside of the mod that are useful to getting further into the mod. Okay. All right, so let's get some stone. Right? So we can't do um, too much automation because I don't really remember how to automate this. I used to be able to do it, but um, you know things change. So, so actually, what we can do is say like a logistical sorter, okay, uh, and then we get a chest, right? So what you can do is very simple automation for like the first tier. Um, we're just gonna remove this, remove this, new filter. We'll do this, okay, start, save, and there we go. Okay, so we'll just throw our blank slate in here. We'll throw our stone in here. And this should work. Doodly doo. I think since there's multiple in there, it's not gonna it's gonna try to do it all at once. So that's an issue. Yeah, so we'll need something that's like regeneration sooner or later. Like we could do a simple beacon. Just do a beacon outside of here. I think this should be pretty close. I don't remember how many blocks you need to make a max beacon, in all honesty. Um, I don't think I've ever actually made a max beacon in Minecraft. And in, in, like, I've only ever done like Ritual of the Gaia which used a beacon, I think, so. We're just gonna fail at this real quick and see what happens. Also, I'm using iron because that's something I have the most of, so. I don't think this is max tier, but that'll be fine. 
Yeah, it's a max tier. Hmm. How do I do max tier then? I'd have to probably look it up, in all honesty. Which I don't want to do. Yeah, this is not, this is definitely not maxed here because this is a wonky size. Boop, boop, boop. My phone just turned on because I said boop, boop, boop. So that's funny. Iron. Can I do regeneration? Yes. No? Is that regeneration? Aha, I have regeneration. Not the greatest regeneration, but regeneration nevertheless. I don't think this is going to work very well. So let's actually pull out all the stone and let's just do this manually, but let's get some, uh, well, let's do some regeneration or something. Cause this is going to take a second. Regen. Um, I mean, we have simple potions, potions of regeneration. Actually we have potions of instant health, don't we? I thought we did. Hmm. I got nothing. Oh well. Well we'll we'll figure it out later. Let's just do it the manual way. So let me do this for a little bit and I'll be back. Okay, so I came up with a real quick, just simple automation for tier one. Um and this looks a little weird. But so, so what's happening is you're, I'm using an RF tools utility inventory checker, which is blank. Uh, it's just checking for slot one or slot zero, um, which is the slot that it's currently using. And then the amount, if there's one item in here, it's going to send a redstone signal that will send it through this redstone wire to this inverter, uh, which is this redstone torch. So whenever there's no items, this redstone torch is on. Whenever there is an item, this redstone torch is off. And this is toggled to have a specific, um, uh, like have redstone interaction. So this is basically just working here. <clears throat> and I can throw some more stone in here. And it's gonna do one at a time per every single uh, thing. So that's pretty cool. Now all we need to do is make sure we keep blood in here and we should be good so yeah some simple automation just wanted to quickly update you guys this is just going to be a little bit quicker for tier one um getting the runes and stuff because it is going to take a second to you know get that far um yeah so you can see we're already down to 21 of these uh, we got three, they got a couple stacks in there now. So I'm going to let this go and I'll be back in a bit. All right. So I've actually stopped the production just for a second here. Cause we do need to look into what else we can do here. Cause there are, you know, some other chapters and blah, blah, blah. So let's see. So we've got blood altars, alchemy arrays, demons will, um, we will need will. I'm pretty sure. Uh, soul snares. Um, I'm not 100% sure what this does anymore. Yeah, so we need like the Tarkotic gems and things. These are really useful. Um, I do remember that. So Tarkotic gems. If you look... There are crafting recipes that are needed, the that need these. So that is pretty cool. We'll probably need to get these. I don't actually know what these are, but you know, 
uh, let's look into getting this stuff, I think, in a second here. Um, first off, I believe we need a tier 2 altar. And I can't remember. Can I pump out this? I thought this was a fluid. Uh, isn't the blood from blood magic a fluid? So if we go and grab a tank, like a normal tank, uh, this tank will be fine. And we grab a mechanical pipe. Right? So if we do this and do this, um, and then we grab our configurator, wherever that is, there it is. Toss that in here. Not that. Uh, let's go to fluids. And then let's just push it. Can I do that? It looked like it worked for a second. And then proceeded to stop. How much is in here? Thousand? Uh, so let's go fluid cable. Let's try this. I, I don't remember if you can fully pull everything out of this, um, but I know you could actually create a system where if you wanted to, you could have it to where the uh, ritual of killing, I don't remember the name of the ritual, but there's a ritual that kills mobs and gives life essence into the actual altar. Um, and that would allow for you to set up multiple altars and you can actually transfer the fluids to both of them or to like one from to the other kind of thing, so that's pretty cool. Okay, yeah. So I think what it is, is actually the Blood Altar has a internal tank type of thing, and it actually limits the amount you can pull out per second unless you have better runes. Um, so this is going to take a second, so I'll be back then. Okay, so quickly looking at JEI, this gives you a general idea of how many runes are inside of this uh, inside of this mod. So you have blank rune, which is just kind of your default safe option. Um, you also have speed runes, rune of sacrifice, rune of self-sacrifice, dis uh, displacement rune, rune of capacity, augmented capacity, rune of the orb, uh, acceleration rune, and charging rune. Um, these all do different things. I believe it's in the book. Um, if we look up blood runes here, um, there's like the acceleration rune, increase the rate of a couple operations, while normally operations of charging of the charging rune and displacement rune occur in every 20 ticks. One tick of the delay is removed per rune, down to a minimum of one operation per tick. So, kind of just accelerates your crafting speed runes. Um, this increases all crafting inside the blood ma the blood uh, altar. Um, so this just allows for like there to be an internal buffer type of thing uh, displacement increase the flow rate yeah so what I was saying earlier is that there is like a limit to how much you can pull out so if you were to make a system uh, or another blood magic uh, altar to create like a mob farm somewhere else this would be what you would want to use because this would allow for you to make it faster. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, the augmented capacity uh, increases blood capacity of the altar by a multiplicative of 7.5% per rune. So allows you to get more into the altar, which is always a good thing. Um, rune of capacity increases it. Uh, capacity of blood altar by an additive of 20% per rune. Um, what is the difference between those actually? The augmented capacity runes apply after the regular capacity runes. Hmm. I'm not 100% sure what that fully means, but there's just different capacities. Um, I think you might have a limit to the, the rune of capacity, and you then you use the augment capacity to make them better, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Don't quote me on that one. Um, it might be, since you craft the augmented capacity with the capacity, it might do both. So that might be the thing, because you can see here, the rune of capacities inside of this. Um, so, yeah. Rune of the orb increases the capacity of the blood orb that is inside of the altar by 2% additively 
per rune while it is inside of the altar. So this just allows for you to have a better source of getting LP because you don't have to prick yourself with the orb. You can actually do this um, constant thing where you keep the thing full. Uh, rune of self-sacrifice increase the LP gained in the blood altar through means that use a player's health. Each rune gives a bonus of 10% add additivity. Wait, additively per rune. So more, more life per uh, prick, I guess. Um, we could actually grab some speed runes. Um, so for example, let's uh, let's do this. Let's toss these in here. Let's get eight. For our first tier, oh, well, that's nine, um, but we just need eight, and then we can do, let's get some sugar here, sugar, sugar, okay, and then let's go for one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, and then we will do the rest of the runes that are in here okay so the way we can do this is for the corners you have to have blank runes i do believe uh, for this tier at least um, and then you can do the augmented runes here and then you could say grab a building block and put the blood altar here okay so this should be upgraded to tier two so you can see we're still able to prick ourselves but if we take a rune of this is just blank slate here which are the first tier runes we should be able to upgrade this if it did correctly upgrade right so if we look in here keep an eye on this yep see there we go so we are at tier two we now have reinforced slates so reinforced slates are the tier two crafting material uh, which will allow you to get ritual stones, ritual of self, rune of sacrifice, rune of sacrifice, um, and things like that. Uh, they're also used for getting some sigils and different things, which we'll get into a little bit later. And of course, they are for tier three as well. So, as you can see, we are getting somewhere. Uh, we are in tier two. I wouldn't. Def I would definitely not mind some tier, some runes of self sacrifice. In all honesty. Because it is taking quite a lot of my health to do this. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's see here. So we could also take this tank. Remember, because we do have some life essence in here. And just pump it in. So yeah, see, there is no transfer of how much you can put into the thing. It's only out of the thing. So you do need those one capacity runes or whatever if you wanted to... Uh, actually do this more I would assume so okay so let's see I, I don't know how we'd want to actually automate this because you can't really pull out the reinforced slates because they are needed to um, to actually craft these the blank slates are required to craft the, re the uh, reinforced slates so yeah so we might just do this a little bit more manual but let's see so if we grab some stone here Actually, we have some stone on us. Uh, if we grab this and we throw it in here, let's see how quickly this crafts. Because these are our four speed upgrades, pretty much. Four speed runes. Yeah, that's that's too much quicker. Um, so, yeah, let me do this a few times. And I think if you actually leave these in here, it will actually go to the next tier immediately after. So, yeah, I'll be right back. Uh, let me get some things and see some other things. Alrighty, so we're doing something a little different, a little strange here, in all honesty. Um, this might look a little weird. Uh, we're still kind of putting it together. So, if you do not know, there is a thing called a sacrificial dagger. Not the sacrificial knife, but the sacrificial dagger. The sacrificial knife allows for you to kill mobs to actually gain life points. And you can unlock this at tier two. Um, and what I've always done on tier two 
is it's been same since like 1.7 is i always build a kind of like a dark room or a spawner system or something above the blood altar it has to be two blocks above and proceed to kill the creature um above it so uh, i'll show you guys how to get the uh, the dagger in a second i think i showed you guys earlier it is an iron sword inside of a tier 2 blood altar um so we'll be getting that in a second. Uh, I just need to get a spawner in here, and I need to get a uh, just a good general idea of which mob I actually want to kill. Because I'm not 100% sure. Because <clears throat> I don't want to create this to be like dangerous at any point, you know, type of thing. So, no creepers, no spiders, because those are a little harder to deal with. And probably nothing armored or nothing heavily armored. So we'll have to probably go look for a spawner and a dungeon that is just a little bit weak. Um, so, yeah. All right, so this is going to be the basic spawn room. These feral flare lanterns won't bother this because it is um, going to be augmented with the pneumatic crafts spawn thingy, bobber. Okay. So, um... We can look here, this is 10 blocks inside. Uh, I do believe this should be good. And if it isn't, I can put slabs on the top of this building. Um, but I think what we'd want to do is, let's see, about five, and then about five. We need to put a spawner like right here. Um, so, it's going to be a little off-center. We might have mobs spawning on top, but that won't be too bad to deal with. So uh, let's just shift-click this. Let's go get a spawner, and I'll be right back. Alrighty. Uh, we're going to have to just live with the statue bats for a second here, because the Pharaoh Flare Lanterns did seem to just dis disable that completely, uh, which I didn't expect. Um, so we have above us a whole bunch of skeletons shooting at each other, because I angered them, and they proceeded to crossfire. Um... As you can see, they're right here. <clears throat> okay, so we have a sacrificial dagger, or dagger of sacrifice, <clears throat> whatever you want to call it. And we can just start pummeling these guys. Okay, uh, what we can do is we can actually throw our stone back in here. And instead of pricking ourselves, we can just... Sacrificing these guys. Um, we'll need like a trash can or something. Um, I'm not going to make the same mistake I did on a Sky Factory thing, um, where I proceeded to have, and this was the end of it, because I stopped recording after it, because it really pissed me off, um, where I accidentally uh, set up a vacuum hopper thing and proceeded to die, uh, and everything I had on me got sucked into that vacuum, and I proceeded to lose every item I had uh, that pissed me off to the point that I quit making that series. <laughs> Uh, which is no longer my YouTube channel, so can't really go and look for it. So this is very slow compared to what I thought it was going to be. All right. Oh crap. The bad thing about blackstone is it's very, very not hard material. Um, so let's see. So blackstone. And yes, there is a magma torch down there, but it doesn't it doesn't affect mob spawners. By the way, everything's been running perfectly without with that on there. So, hope oh, did not mean to do that. Okay, we can actually throw this in here for a second, uh, and I'm just gonna farm some skeletons. Alrighty, so I've added a few more spawners in here. I took a wither from the other one, um, but what I've done here is I've actually put the vacuum ender hopper thingy on this. Um, and the reason I've done that is because it all gets sent over here. And after being sent over here, it then uh, gets whatever sorted and yada yada and all of that jazz. So it's very useful. It looks like I didn't actually sort the chain mill chest plates properly. Let's see here. 
So that one's full. That one's not full. Let's throw this in here. Okay. So we've had some backlog of that. My bad. It looks like everything's going now. Um, trying to find one that's kind of empty. Looks like that one's got like 66 seconds. Whatever enchant that one was. That's nuts. All right, we'll just wait on that one. Yeah, that cleared up our entire enchant chest because of that. So that's crazy. But yeah, so um, I think we're going to actually wrap up the episode here. Um, we got somewhat far on Blood Magic. There is plenty of stuff to do in Blood Magic, so we'll be focusing on this for a few episodes um, so thank you guys for watching episode 42 of Direwolf 20's 1.16 pack. Um, all the support and all the comments and all the questions really make me happy to see people are interacting with the videos. Um, thank you guys so much. Stay awesome. And, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.